Good morning. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present our work. I'm Jackie Yao, and I'm the Elvis Postdoc Fellow who joined CRD at the end of 2019. I work with uh, Center for Computational Science and Engineering, CCSE. I will introduce our work on the development of an exascale enabled physical modeling for next generation microelectronics. We have been observing the booming of microelectronics recently, and this has motivated us to reevaluate the modeling capability that's currently available. Modern electronics takes, uh, take much more physical mechanism into use, and the application of additional physics has successfully introduced many devices and systems. This include MRI, integrate circuit, acoustic filters, and so on. Recently, people are pushing this field even further. We keep miniaturizing the dimension, the geometric dimensions, and integrating all kinds of functions into one system. The trends include autonomous cars, um, spintronic memory for, computational, for computing applications. More remarkably, quantum computing, uh, quantum information science is switching the paradigm completely. With all this, the challenges on the modeling side is getting bigger and bigger, as well as the, the uh, experimental challenge. Different dynamic systems start affecting each other significantly in one device, and they all dominate the performance. This page describes a small portion of the scenario, and, um, but it gives the message that the, the general interactions between different physical physics um, are more complex than the single physical scenario. It is also a promising direction for future electronic development. Here are some examples. As mentioned earlier, traditional circuits deal with electromagnetic waves or EM waves. Later on, people start using mechanical waves in signal filters because mechanical waves have much smaller uh, loss and dimensions. Um, these two waves couple through piezoelectric material. Another type of material is ferrite or ferromagnetic material. Unlike regular dielectric and metal, um, in ferrites, there are intrinsic magnetic moments. If EM wave propagates in ferrite or ferro, magnetic spin waves are excited, and these two systems start to talk to each other. Spin waves can also talk to mechanical waves, through magnetostrictive material. And this is not all of the pictures. Three physics could all exist and function together in one system. And um, this, this, this kind of material is called multiferroic material. And of course, if we go down to tiny scale, quantum effect shows up. If we introduce superconducting materials at a low temperature and use them in circuit quantum electrodynamics, this is also, um, this is a promising superconducting qubit applications. However, existing software cannot handle the modeling task well. The majority part of challenges lies in the waves, space, and time disparity. In this plot, the slope of the straight line represents wave velocity. EM wave propagates at the speed of light, so it's on the top left. Mechanical waves travel at kilometer per second. Um, so at gigahertz, it's located at the right bottom here. The third type of wave I'm focusing on today is the spin wave, and its velocity is um, similar to mechanical waves, but because of its nanometer scale wavelength, we put it at the very bottom. We can clearly see from this plot that different waves differ dramatically in their wave and speed, uh, sorry, wave and time dimensions. Um, in traditional devices, this is good because being far away means that they do not couple. Um, but in devices where they do couple, this brings significant challenges into numerical simulations because we need to cover the entire space and time region here. And even along one single straight line here, if we get interested in a much smaller scale on chip, we still encounter large space range here, which is sometimes an equally big challenge. 
So to summarize, there's no software ready to use. To be more specific, current um, modeling limitations include that software usually use one single physical module, or if they do use multiple physical module, their coupling algorithm is usually not clear to the users. And the, the, so the available soft, the sorry, the commercial software usually treat subcomponents as simplified black boxes because they typically can only handle one level of magnification in the space. And of course, they are um, proprietary, meaning that there is little or no customization of the algorithm that we can do. They also poor, scale poorly and they do not work on GPU. One example is the ANSYS HFSS package. It's a popular package, one of the most popular packages for um, circuit designers. Um, it can only scale up to two nodes and use 12 cores per node and it cannot function on GPU. So we need to come up with our own solutions to the problem and build our own modeling tool to address the challenge in designing next generation microelectronics devices. We launch um, from, we base off from um, two existing exascale computing projects. Our first launching point is AMRX. It's a software package developed mainly by CCSE here at CRD. It's a block structured adaptive, adaptive mesh refinement for solving systems of nonlinear PDEs. Um, and it's also designed for a variety of DOE applications, such as accelerators, astrophysics, cosmology, multi-phase flow, and combustion. MRX offers quite a few advanced features. Particularly useful to the microelectronic applications are the adaptive mesh refinement or AMR to address the space and time disparities and the embedded boundary representation of geometry um, that can recover curved structures, uh, a curved interfaces much better than staggered cells. Our second launching point is the accelerator ECP application code Warpax. It solves grid-based electromagnetic fields with particle in-cell algorithm. The features that are useful to our development are the numerical error elimination at the interface between the coarse and fine grids using the perfect matched um, layers at this interfaces that's highlighted in green here. We can also directly apply the parallel algorithm by dividing the simulation domains into multiple boxes and calculate the fields in all the boxes simultaneously. And this um, parallel ar uh, computing algorithm increase the simulation speed um, quite a lot. Taking the features from AMRX and Warpax, we initiated the application in micro microelectronics and try to couple new physical modules that present in corresponding systems. Here are some examples. Adding the Landau micromagnetics, we can predict the evolution of magnetic moments under the effect of EM signals. And this is useful in RF front ends and spintronic devices. The coupling algorithm works in the way that we iter iteratively update magnetic fields which is the connection between these two PDEs. At each of the time steps, we make sure to reach to the convergence of all the variables. I'll show this algorithm as a demo case today. Some other examples include Newton's mechanics um, that are possibly useful for solid mechanical applications. We are also ready to implement the London theory for superconductors which is the idea that we got from our collaborators. There are still questions such as, um, you know, how we link these two PDE systems and what are the boundary conditions for the electric currents at the interface between superconductor and regular materials. If you have any thoughts and interest on this, you're very welcome to contact us. Again, as mentioned, I will take the first coupled algorithm as example for today. 
Um, so the reason that we choose to explore uh, micromagnetics um, coupled to EM waves as our first effort um, is that um, micromagnetics is useful in spintronic devices. Um, actually, spintronic is a term which emphasizes the applications and the corresponding technology um, that it, it is involved in is micromagnetics. So micromagnetics is to use magnetic moments to transfer energy and information um, instead of using electron charges. Compared to CMOS technology, magnetic technology is fast in speed and lower in energy consumption. These two features makes it, make it promising for computer architectures. The most successful example is MRAM, magnetic random access memory, uh, shown in this figure here. The memory chip is about one centimeter by half centimeter. Each of the white dots on the chip is a MRAM uh, architecture. The size of each MRAM is one micron, and each digital bit is realized by one unit cell of the spin transfer torque junction shown here. Um, the top and bottom red thin films are ferromagnets and the middle blue film is insulator. The spins that exist in the ferromagnets couple with each other um, um, through the insulator and electric currents on micro scale. Um, the recent report basic research needs for microelectronics by DOE has prioritized revolutionizing memory and data storage and redefining computing by leveraging unexploited physical phenomena. These factors altogether have motivated us to explore micromagnetics technolo technology as the first demonstration. To model this entire chip, we follow the steps introduced by the previous page. We launch from Warpex, add microscopic, microscopic material properties um, um, that, uh, that uh, could handle the, the complex circuit um, components. Um, then we demonstrate other physical modules, which is the Landau micromagnetics in our first attempt. Um, um, the Landau micromagnetics um, theory is a continuum model that describes the evolution of magnetic moments under the effective magnetic field and torques. Our third step is to validate the coupled physics against uh, between these two against existing experiments and theories. Ultimately, we aim to use the software to aid in real design and to optimize microelectronics chip structure. Uh, so um, our goal is that the software will be developed in, to be a guideline for designers and um, um, experimentalists. So the first step to validate EM waves in microscopic materials, we can show three validation cases here. Uh, we can observe the attenuation in electric conductors which is matching the skin depth theory. In the reflection and transmission numerical experiment, the reflection coefficient is shown as predicted, um, as well as the reduction of wavelength um, in, in, the, in the dielectric material. Um, so uh, when epsilon is increased to nine, the wavelength of the EM wave is reduced by half. We can also see a complete reflection from the perfect electric conductor, uh, or PEC, and the E field at the interface is zero. This all match the theoretical prediction. There are several other validation cases, including optic incidents and good, good conductors. I didn't include them um, to save some space and time. Um, we're also under the progress of constructing more validation cases with practical structures like transmission lines, resonators, and so on. Our next step is to individually validate Landau model. Um, the Landau theory, um, as mentioned, um, describes magnetic moments M. 
um, and M is processing around the magnetic bias field. In the meantime, damping toward the bias direction. If the direction of the magnetic moment is different from the applied magnetic bias, M will tilt toward the bias direction and at the same time, precess and damp. Um, these two figures show this phenomena. The initial M is in the X direction as shown here. So MX um, starts from the saturation value. The applied bias is in Z direction. So MZ increases from zero to saturation value. MX and MY oscillate with a 90 degree phase difference, which validates the elliptical precession around Z axis. We further added a large EM field and we can notice that MY and MX, um, the, the oscillation between M, MX and MY um, is, is continuing even after the Landau precession reaches to steady state. With this, we put a, a check mark here on the validation um, of this. The final step is to couple EM to Landau magnetic together. We achieve this goal with a magnetically tunable filter. It's a waveguide with a ferrite slab inserted. The animation here shows a directional propagation of EM wave, and you can notice some non-reciprocity behavior um, in these two directions at a later time step. From the spectrum of EM wave attenuation, we can also clearly see the waveguide cutoff phenomena and also the ferromagnetic resonance attenuation peak. Both these two phenomena are observed by one simulation with coupled EM and Landau micromagnetic systems. The simulation um, also gets converged while we increase the number of meshes in the structure. So here on this page, uh, we did the order of accuracy test and also con spatial converging test. As we increase the number of meshes from uh, 1024 by 4 by 512 to 2048 by 4 by uh, 1024, we can observe um, almost no difference between these two simulations. The curves overlap with each other. Um, so we can say that the uh, simulation uh, will uh, the, the simulation is correct and converged with, um, with um, the mesh number of 1024 by 4 by 512. The reason that we only have four cells in the Y direction is that we're looking at the fundamental mode of the waveguide. Uh, so in Y direction, the wave is um, uniform. That's why in Y direction, we can have as, as few uh, meshes as possible. Um, we also look at the errors, errors at different resolutions and time steps, and we confirmed the second order accuracy of the coupling algorithm um, as shown here. Again, uh, we're, we're still working on more demonstration cases with practical structures. With a note to node comparison, we observe a 60 times increase of the simulation speed on GPU compared to CPU and individual functions also run tens of times faster on GPU. To summarize um, all the features of the modeling tool that we have developed, um, this is a portable, flexible, and fast package, uh, software package that can um, uh, simulate the complex physical phenomena in next generation microelectronics. This code package um, Artemis, uh, Adaptive Mesh Refinement Time Domain Electromagnetics, Electrodynamics, um, is portable to different platforms. It can work all the way from laptop to multi-core GPU superconductors. It is also flexible for the users to add improvised physical algorithms according to um, specific applications. Um, we're also implementing adaptive mesh refinement to increase the scale disparity. Our future work um, um, include to uh, model the, the realistic uh, structures of MRAM 
um, at the same time, we would also, as mentioned, we would also to add um, the superconducting module so that we can predict the performance of superconducting quantum chip. Uh, we also appreciate the, uh, we also recognize the language transfer between um, classical um, uh, fields and um, quantum um, language to describe the, um, the problem. Um, so uh, we are still exploring um, this, uh, we're still exploring um, to apply the code package in in quantum applications. And our long-term goal is to have a more complete view of various levels of the chips and reach to um, a, a different levels of magnification. And, and this page shows our um, um, detailed future work plan, um, as mentioned, demonstrate and design of practical magnetic memory devices and fully integrate the AMR functions into the new package. Um, we're also interested in exploring spin photon coupling demonstration and um, optimization, um, and also superconducting solvers to uh, model the, the quantum chip behavior. And we also have um, NERSC computational resources specifically relocated for the microelectronics development and simulations this year. So um, any thoughts and collaborations are highly welcomed. Feel free to follow up with me. Um, and I would like to thank to um, thank all the team members and collaborators um, that they include the uh, MRX developers, Warpax collaborators, and the developers on um, the microelectronic uh, application chip, uh, application package. And I would also to thank our um, scientific advice advisors. With this, I would like to thank you and welcome questions.